Hi, good afternoon, welcome. We are here in studio today. We're talking sports with Val, and we're doing our 2023 Pioneer High School Fall Preview. And before we get started here, Val, congratulations, just finishing up three years here at RTC. And when you talk about the things that have gone on, obviously the pandemic and everything that has happened with the last three years, but boy, what a three-year run it's been covering Pioneer uh, sports. My life changed three years ago when I came to RTC because all of a sudden I was covering Pioneer, and I never covered Pioneer before in my professional career. And <laughs> I mean, I covered maybe the most amazing year just about any school has ever had in 2021 mm -hmm. with Pioneer winning state titles in volleyball, ba girls basketball, and softball. That was uh, – uh, I still can't get over that how that happened. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't even seem – feasible I yeah mean, how did they do that yeah that's it's a it's an accomplishment that will only gain in impressiveness over time it's only right. it's only going to be more unbelievable when we t when if we get to back together 10 years from now or 20 years from now well I, I think the the following year proved how hard it was because none of those teams even made it out of their sectional the mm -hmm. next year so yeah. I mean that that really showed you what an accomplishment that the, all three of those teams had and Really, uh, you know, a lot of the girls were on right. all three of those teams. Yeah, and to win all three in the middle of a pandemic, mm -hmm. in addition to all that, when, yeah. we were, when we were so worried about kids getting sick, and yeah. would that knock them out for a while? I mean, yeah, it, it or, was... when, or would knock the team out for a while? Right, right. I mean, there were there were worries about you know would teams have to cancel their season? I mean, yeah. So for them, just to, the 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 mental toughness and the physical toughness that it took to do that. Is just still amazing to this day. Yeah, I, I remember the um, scrimmage at Pioneer for volleyball, and or it might have been the first game of the year. Uh, you know, talking to Coach Nyes and like, you know, I think they did senior night the first game of the year, and that mm -hmm. was because you know they didn't know if they would yeah. end up having a, a season, and they they said you know, hey, this might be the final game that we have, mm -hmm. and fortunately they were able to continue the season and yeah. what a season it was and. Uh, you know, we're going to talk, uh, talk and, and, more. And to this day, it's just amazing. Whenever I go to a Pioneer sporting event, how warmly I'm received. I mean, even I, I was just so worried about, boy, these kids are not going to know my name. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and hey, you're not Bo. You're not yeah. Bo Wicker. But, yeah. no, everybody's just so great to me. It's just it's just phenomenal. Well, and, and you know, you're not Bo, but for those that don't, that don't know, you, you went to school with Bo, right? I went to IU with Bo, yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's obviously some history there mm -hmm. and, you know, Bo does such a great job mm -hmm. of, of covering the area down there, but uh, yeah, he he does a great job. But uh, you know, there's there's another uh, you know another writer yeah. on the beat, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. So um, yeah, but it's been a lot of fun. Of course, that comes in off of the tail of you know what the football team was able to do, and uh, you know they had a they had a pretty good uh, 2020 season as well, um, but. Uh, Let's let's oh, talk that semi state game against Fort Wayne Lures. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I I still say that uh I just wanted to give every kid on that team a hug because yeah. they were they were right there. Yeah. I mean it was just it was just a David and it was kind of David and Goliath in a way. Yeah, you know, it was. It was. I, I still think that injury I think yeah. that uh was Gomer. Yeah. You, you know, that injury was bigger than I think anybody really understood at the time. Yeah. Uh, when he got hurt, the the things changed on the offensive line, and the things opened up for yeah. Lures on the defensive mm -hmm. side. Uh, so, anyway, let's talk about the uh, upcoming season now. We've enough reminiscing, I yeah. guess, for now, you know. But uh, you know, Adam Barry and the football team, um, that you know, they've just been so good for so long, and you, you knew eventually things were going to cycle through. Mm -hmm. uh, but you hated to see it happen, you know. Two and eight last year. Uh, I think the first losing season they had for what was it, twenty five? Twenty five, yeah. I think beyond that, I think it was, yeah. I think it was first losing season in twenty five years and fewest wins in a season in twenty eight years. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, twenty seven years, I. Yeah. And and a rough end too, as they lost for uh, the second time last year to the Triton Trojans, forty two to six in the sectional. So. Um, you know they're they're going to have some things to uh, to work on and and you know we talk about that Hoosier North Conference obviously you know Knox is going to be really good this year Judson looks to be really good again this year Laville is not going anywhere even though and, they have a new coach Laville yeah yeah I think they're yeah I mm -hmm. think they're going to be a, a surprise mm -hmm. and 
you know, so it continues to be a tough conference, uh, you know, year after year in football. And I don't think this year will be any different. And, you know, I guess you do have a, a you know, you got Caden Hill and you got Ryland Toloza. So mm -hmm. that's a good starting point, but you got to find some pieces to go with them. Right, and then Tyler Zellers, I think, is going to be another one of those pieces. I think he's going to play a key role in that offensive backfield. And then you've got Micah Rands back as a sophomore quarterback. I mean, he got a lot of playing time last year as a freshman. Mm -hmm. So he's back. Um, you know, we always talk about, boy, you know, did, it's important that you have a good summer in the weight room. And we kind of almost take that for granted. But for Pine, it was really important that they have a good summer in the weight room. Mm -hmm. Because the problem last year was, let's be honest, they got pushed around. Yeah. I mean, they got – I mean, the – they struggled from a speed and physicality standpoint against most of the teams in a very tough Hoosier North Conference. And then on top of that, they play, you know, they played a tough non-conference schedule with Lewis Cass and Hammond Central. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, you know, some of the issues last year. And then some of the two were, were just the, the inexperience uh, part. Uh, I mean, when you're freshmen and sophomores, are not built like juniors and seniors. So it was just, it's going to take some time. Yeah, I think they were playing a lot more freshmen last year than they probably wanted to. Yeah, um, those freshmen will be sophomores this year, and right guys like Eli Guffey are gonna. It's gonna be fun to see how much they improve. But we, you saw Toloza. I mean, uh, we saw what a, a healthy Ryland Toloza is just an absolute force at that fullback spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we saw what he did in the track season. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is just lightning fast, and mm -hmm. and he's strong as a horse, and. So, it, yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting to see, um, you know, and, and I think I think now they finally have that quarterback spot kind of nailed down. Mm -hmm. I think it was still kind of a, a question mark maybe going into last season mm -hmm. uh, who was going to end up being the quarterback. So uh, once they get that down, then they can uh, kind of work around that. Yeah. Uh, defensively, the, I mean, the, the you know, Coach Matt Bianco does a great, great job, and the, the slanting defense is not going to change, but it's just uh, getting more comfortable with that because uh, they got, I mean, the, again, it was just weird seeing the Pioneer, Pioneer defense struggle. I mean, we're just so used to them posting shutouts year after year. Mm -hmm. they, they're going to miss Caleb Sweet on that middle linebacker spot. I mean, he was just he was just such a leader on the defensive end. So, um, you know, very curious to see how they, they turn out defensively. Um and how they kind of how they hold up over the course of nine ten weeks. Yeah. Uh, line wise, you know, it's uh, you know the twenty nine kids came out for football at Pioneer, so they're not going to be able to to shuttle in a lot of guys. I mean, it's a pretty low number by Pioneer standards, so they're going to be able to shuttle in replacements. So they might have to maybe more two way players. They they're going to have to uh, battle through some fatigue. Maybe it's possible. Right. That's where, uh, like you said, you know, the weight room and the conditioning. Yeah, that's that comes in huge. But you know, Culver, Caston, Pioneer—they're all kind of in that same boat as far as uh, you know, playing a lot of players two ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you kind of get used to it after a while. And really, it's it's a little bit strange sometimes when you, you know, coach says you know out of the out of the game, you know, at, at some point. So um, it, it's not as bad as as you think but uh yeah it does it does take a lot out of you and, and definitely uh you want to come into the season mm -hmm. in good shape you're right but you know it's just amazing now there are two pioneer players playing division one football with jack kaiser at notre dame and now a die llewellyn is he's a walk-on but he is a member of the purdue football team yeah and he, yeah. he got a carry in the in the uh, citrus bowl game against lsu so Again, there's always, and I always love that because you can say, "Hey, this could be you." You can tell your young kids if you put the work into it, and you're you're, you're passionate about that. That good things can happen. Yeah, and and uh, Ezra's running D1 track at Purdue, yeah. so yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of good things that have uh, have come out of Royal Center from that Pioneer right. football team. But uh, when you talk about Micah Rands, he's a good decision maker. He's got good quarterback instincts. But now it's kind of getting the whole thing to gel and getting the, you know, um, and, and I think being able to make some plays in the passing game. Obviously, Pioneer is not going to make a ton of plays in the passing game uh, with Toloza and Zellers and Hill, but uh, just to make a couple to keep teams honest. Mm -hmm. All 
but uh, and you know again that it's coming in 2024 I mean Knox and Laville will be out in North Miami and South Central are coming into the conference so yeah. I think it's gonna be a little bit more of a balanced conference it's gonna be more of a more of a 1A type of conference right obviously Knox is 3A and Laville is 2A for football so mm-hmm. it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an interesting conference starting in 2024 it's gonna be a bit wide open and you know Pioneer wants to obviously Pioneer wants to be ready for that but they, first they've got the 2023 season yep so they're going to be opening up uh, next Friday at home and uh, versus the county rival Lewis Cass and you know that'll be a good test for Pioneer because Lewis Cass you know they graduated obviously mm-hmm. a, a lot of players you know Luke mm-hmm. Chambers graduated he's uh, playing uh, U Indy right yep yeah so he's he's playing D two football um, I think they still have their quarterback back but um, you know they they've got some some holes to fill yeah. so. Uh, right out of the gate, and then of course you know they have that uh, that one three is their first four games of their schedule. So they're home for the first game, and then they got three games on the road. So yeah, it's a uh, it's an interesting start. Including to the season. including Laville <laughs> is in that three. Yeah, and Caston's in that three. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So you you want to have a good showing in that uh, home yeah. game opener against uh, Lewis Cass. Right. All right, on to the uh, Pioneer Panthers volleyball team, and you know we talked about the 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 three P or the uh, triple crown as they call it down at Pioneer. The girls winning the, the volleyball, basketball, and softball state titles in twenty and twenty one. Obviously, the volleyball team was the first one to do it in mm-hmm. twenty. They won that state title, and these girls that are seniors, uh, some of them were you know bigger parts of it than others, but uh, they were all there in that twenty season. Well, there there are seven of them. Yeah, and six uh, only six of them were there in 2020. Yeah, so. and you know some un um, pioneer like uh, you know sectionals the last two years, right? They've right. they've done nothing but win, win, win. Uh, you know since Rod Nice became the volleyball coach, yeah. and uh, you know they got beat two years ago in that sectional championship at Southwood to the Knights. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, last year's was, I'm sure that was a hard pill to swallow. Wabash, very good team. Mm-hmm. But Pioneer going into that sectional, they were definitely the favorite. Yeah. And they get knocked out in the well, sectional I, semifinal. I, I talked with Rod Nyes on the phone last night, and he was he was very blunt and very honest. He goes, we lost that match to Wabash last year because we got out coached. Because I got out coached. Hmm. He goes, Wabash changed up their defense on us, and we had no answer for it. And I didn't even realize that they had changed up their defense until after the match was over. Oh. And he goes, and then I saw Wabash play Rochester in the sectional final that night, and I was like, oh, they changed it up for us. Mm-hmm. I mean, this so, yeah. I mean, he 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 was very blunt. He, he took it he took it on himself, but he, he's also very very optimistic about what this group can do. He's talking about making a run in Class Two A. Yeah. And when you given the experience they have, you can see why. Yeah. When you talk about um, Kylie Attinger, when you talk about Brooklyn Borges, when you talk about Adeline Kripe. When you talk about Blair Grigsby, when you talk about Elizabeth Rance, when you talk about Mackenzie Rogers, mm-hmm. you've got a whole bunch of seniors who are immersed in the culture and who play a lot of volleyball. And then you had another senior newcomer in Emma Sells who's a transfer from Rochester, and she's played a lot of volleyball. Mm-hmm. And then you've got a really, really talented junior in, in Kirsten Nyes. Right. And I'm talking with Coach, um, talking with Coach Nyes, and he's talked a lot about Kind of doing like almost like a three setter system, where you and it's more like a three middle system, hmm. where you have almost like three middle hitters out there with, with Attinger, and Borges and Rogers, but you also have three setters with Rogers and Grigsby and Nyes. So hmm. Rogers is kind of count. It's like when she's in the when she rotates to the middle, you've got kind of the three middle, but when she's but she can also set. So it's mm-hmm. it's a very unique team to prepare for. Yeah, he's gonna. He he wants to try that. Yeah, it's something I've never heard of. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. But I can, you know, mm-hmm. seeing those three play. Yeah, you, you could see where it, it might work. Yeah, as long as they're under, on the same page. Right now, you've also got now you got four newcomers. You got Emma Sells, you got um, two sophomores and Mackenzie Hauser and Aspen Molinar, mm-hmm. and you got a freshman, a Lois Layer. Lois Layer is Adeline Kripe's cousin, mm-hmm. and. Uh, he's very uh, high on Lois Lair. Mm-hmm. He thinks she could be somebody who makes a bigger contribution towards the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Again, she's just a freshman, so right, right. we'll see how she does. 
She's uh, got the she's got the correct genes. Yeah. She's yeah. She's and I've seen her play uh, softball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've told I I've told I need to see her play softball. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, as for um, Brooklyn Borgia, she's not a hundred percent back from her knee injury yet. Mm -hmm. But hopefully she'll get there. Obviously she's she's already verbally committed to Ohio Christian. So. Mm -hmm. And um, Mackenzie Rogers is verbally committed to Vanguard. Mm -hmm. So, and I think Coach Nice thinks, well, that'll be great because it's been his experience that when you've had a senior who's hasn't committed in terms of playing college volleyball yet, that they 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 don't play well, um, that, that they're they're kind of thinking of maybe they maybe I don't know if distracted is the right word, but now that they're now that they made these verbal commitments, that they can just have fun playing volleyball as seniors. Yeah, yeah. We should also mention not only does Borges recovering still recovering from her knee, and she had surgery last December, but um, Elizabeth Rance uh, was involved in a car accident where she suffered a concussion and a broken nose. So they hope she might not be ready to go for the Cass County tournament, or might not be 100. percent But hopefully she'll get better as the season goes on, because Elizabeth Rance is a heck of a volleyball player too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a great group of mm -hmm. uh, seniors and and. You know they're they're hungry, and like you said, that that two um, A volleyball, it's tough. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's I think the one thing. And I don't remember if you told me that Coach Nice said this, or I talked to Coach Nice, mm -hmm. but he's like, you know, in one A, there's four or five teams maybe that you can say can compete for a state title, but mm -hmm. in two A, there's fifteen or twenty yeah. teams in each north and south mm -hmm. that you definitely could say can compete for that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's the thing that happened last year in that sectional. You know, Wabash, they were one of those teams. You know, they definitely could compete. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even even with Pioneer coming in as hot as they were, mm -hmm. you know, Wabash definitely was uh, was ready for the task. And they're hosting the sectional this year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the last time they hosted the sectional, I think things went pretty good. They wound up winning state that year yeah. in 2020. Yeah. And it was a tough sectional to get out of then. I mm -hmm. mean, I remember that Northfield match. That mm -hmm. was uh, that was a barn burner. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know they so. get to the regional. They might have to run into South Central. They might have to run into Andrean. Yeah. So it's, but first things first. They got to win the sectional after two years of not winning it. I'm sure they're going to appreciate it if they can pull through this time. Yep. Yeah. They're going to be hungry for sure, and uh, in a way um, that they, right. you know probably haven't right. been for a couple of years and and one thing that coach nice has talked about is we've got to get read better at serve receive mm -hmm. yeah he's really uh that's really something they've been emphasizing in practice he goes it's something that he's you can definitely tell it's something they're concerned about yeah and i, I just want to say adeline Kripe, i think uh is one of the best servers on the team yeah um I, I don't know that her serve unless you just watch them all the time i don't know if everybody appreciates what she does from the service line but mm -hmm. That girl can serve. Yeah, I mean, she, and she's tough as well. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, great libero, but uh, yeah. she is a tough mm -hmm. player from the serve. Yeah. One other girl I want to give a shout out to is Ava BC, sophomore. Good to see some varsity time as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if you see if you see varsity time on that team, yeah, as anything but a junior or senior this year, you're good. Yeah. Because it's going to be tough to get on the floor, mm -hmm. especially with that group of seniors. Yeah. All right. Um, Cross country. Well, the good news for Pioneer Cross Country is that Violet Montgomery is healthy and ready to go. Yeah. I mean, she is back from the illness that really kept her out of all of track season. And, you know, she's such a leader. And, um, you know, I was talking with Coach Dakota Williams, and he goes, uh, you know, once she got healthy, it didn't take her any time to get back to her old self. She's a person whom you cannot keep down for long at all. Once our meet starts, she will be competing at her highest level yet against the best each team has to offer. She is a once in a lifetime runner, and mm -hmm. is looking forward to it to her senior season. And again, it's you know, Violet. It's just it's not just her speed and her her talent. It's her leadership mm -hmm. too. Yeah, and you can see why Coach Williams says that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, other newcomers on the girls' side, we need to talk about uh, Avery Hasselby and Ellie Hines. They're the two freshmen. Uh, Kylie Jamerson and Leyland Malco are both juniors. Mm -hmm. And I thought Kylie, mm -hmm. um, she really improved in mm -hmm. track. 
uh, from her freshman year to her sophomore year. So I'm interested to see how she does in cross country because she was one of those that, you know, the freshman year kind of, you know, okay, the race is getting close to being done. Where's Kylie at? And last year she was competing. I mean, she was competing at a pretty high level when, mm-hmm. when Violet went out, uh, Kylie was, was taking care of those distance races for Pioneer. And so I'm, I'm really, uh, really interested to see how she does here in cross country. Yeah. Uh, boys side, this is a bit just a very, very talented boys team. When you hmm. talk about Carson Meyer, Jackson Baker, and of course Leighton Dot, your reigning regional champion. Never heard those names. Yeah, pretty, you, pretty darn, <laughs> pretty darn good kids. And then you've got, uh, you know, you got two freshmen coming in, and Dane Bodich and Jack Nance, who hope for, to get in that lineup. And then you've got Kayla Bowler and Silas Rao, and then you've hmm. got Kevin Gluth and Elliot Cooper. Yeah. So it's uh, Coach Williams is going to have to make some tough decisions. Four through seven. Mm-hmm. Once you get to the conference and sectional, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a good problem to have. Though. Yeah, it's a nice problem to yeah. have. Um, you know, uh, uh, according to Coach Williams, he goes, "Our freshman Dane and Jack, along with sophomore Elliot Cooper, are keeping right behind those top three. And you know, our gaps are closing more and more each day. So that's you know, um, he says he hasn't been. They're in good shape already, so he hasn't had to worry about conditioning too much. Right." And that's a, that's a good sign. And Cooper is another one, kind of like uh, Kylie, that you know mm-hmm. he he's going to continue to to work. And you know, obviously, you got the big three that he's behind, but he's going to be right there. Yeah, he's he's a good kid to watch too. Yeah, and he goes. He said, um, "I'm very impressed with this year's teams, and honestly, this team has all of the right pieces to be our best team yet at Pioneer." Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, and he goes. You know, the goal is to win sectionals. And at that Logan Sports sectional, it's not going to be easy. But, I mean, that depth will certainly help out. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it seems like, the, you know, they have talent in the junior high level, and that eventually moves on. And, I mean, that's so key. I mean, feeder system is important in every sport, but it seems like it's really, 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 really important in cross country. Yeah, yeah. We're looking forward to uh, to seeing how they do there with the uh, with the cross country. You know, I, obviously right. the the boys just watching them in the spring on the, on the track. You know, watching how what they do and yeah. you know Leighton and Jackson and and Carson. I mean, they're just they're just relentless. Yeah. I mean, you know, they kind of remind me of uh, you know those casting runners back. Um, Rands and Hernandez Rios. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just mm-hmm. just crazy. Uh, but uh, they definitely love to run. Yeah. So that's going to be great. Um, right. girls... Sectionals at Logansport, and then the regional is at Brownsburg if they make it that far. Top five teams at sectional make it to regional. Yeah, so that's new for them too, Yeah. going down to Brownsburg. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the girls' uh, golf team, a little uh, inexperience after they graduated, I think, what, five girls last year? Right. So they've got five on the team this year, one sophomore and four newcomers. Mm-hmm. sophomore who's... Mia McKegg, who played last year as a freshman, mm-hmm. but I think that was her first year playing golf. So she's, you know, that was just her second year playing golf. She's the most experienced player on the team, and everybody's just kind of learning the sport right now. Um, Talk with Megan Peppers, the coach, and she just said, you know, you can you can teach them how to swing a club only for so long, and they just have to get out on the course and kind of learn for themselves and just kind of learn through their experience. Mm-hmm. You know, I get to meet uh, Bailey Rowan, who is playing number three, and. Nice, such a nice kid, but you can just tell she was just nervous out there, and uh, you know, and, and again, part of it too is not only teaching the game, but teaching etiquette and mm-hmm. and and stuff like that. But it's yeah. it's, it's there's a, a lot of little rules too. Yeah, <laughs> don't do this here, and you can't do this here. Right, so it, it's a work in progress. Yeah, is I guess yeah. what I'm trying to say. Well, they they got a, a really big, they had a really big test right out of the gate too, with Rochester coming down there. For their first oh yeah, game. I mean you see Rod, those Rochester kids play that can maybe be a little intimidating. Yeah, yeah. like well, that, that's the way you want to play, but yeah. also when you're trying to play that way, it's it's intimidating. Yeah. I mean, you no, know, they graduated a player, Nashlyn Brook, who was All Conference, I believe, last year, and they graduated another pretty good player, in Emily Schmaltz. So mm-hmm. yeah, maybe a little bit of a rebuilding year, but it's a work in progress. And I think mm-hmm. the good, I think that they have five is a really good sign. Yeah, yeah, it's good that the numbers came there because. Initially, I thought that the the numbers were going to be pretty low, so that's mm-hmm. great that they do have them uh, those five. All right, I think that's all of our uh, pioneer. Unless you know something that I missed, I think that's all I have for right now. Okay, so uh, we will be looking forward to uh, 
obviously we'll be at Pioneer on Tuesday yep. for the uh, volleyball with the Rochester Zebras, and then they will open up on Friday night against Lewis Cass on the football field. So yeah. Looking yeah, forward to that. Yeah, scrimmage against Northwestern, first game against Lewis Cass. Yep. So looking forward to that. And another good year, i, I got to give a shout-out to Kelly Colmar, our uh, TV and radio class teacher there. Started off as a club back, you know, when we first started with Pioneer, turned it into a class. Then the next year we had radio and TV one and two. This year we've got a, a student that's going to be in TV and radio three. Mm-hmm. So we've got three different uh, classes of uh, TV and radio going on, and she's done a fantastic job over there and directing that program. So we mm-hmm. appreciate that, and we appreciate her, and we appreciate everybody for watching, and that's going to wrap it up here for our Pioneer 2023 Fall Preview.